<sighs> Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I stand before you one last time not to persuade or dissuade you on a piece of legislation, but to bid you farewell. I have had the honor and privilege of serving in this chamber for over for the past 20 years. And that's a long time. Not that serving another term would not have been welcome, it's just not meant to be. So in reflecting over my time here, I'd like to share some memories that stand out for me. I was elected into the minority, and I'm leaving with my colleagues in the minority. But there were four years that I served in the majority, and those were golden years. To be able to propose legislation and see it pass on the House floor, to serve as a chairperson of a committee, to see bills through your committee and know that there may be tough votes you have to take, but for a good result in the end. To meet with constituents and be able to take action upon their concerns, those are sweet memories for me. Issues I actively worked on over the years, some I floor managed, some I helped to craft. PBMs, that was round one. Child safety seats, I worked with a Republican legislator who was also a grandmother who had a van and didn't have enough room for car seats, so she didn't think it was real important. That was quite a debate that we had. Civil rights and marriage equality, eminent domain, it never ends. The restoration of voting rights for convicted felons upon their release in 2005, and that resulted in an executive order signed by Governor Vilsack. I worked with two Republican colleagues on that, and we were really proud to have gotten it that far. The bottle bill of 2009, House File 777. I began to think that the numbers meant something. That was open meetings, open records, and the creation of the Public Information Board. The ICN, it was always expanding, not selling it, that was the battle. Senate File 199, subpoena power. I battled with Representative Bodler over that to get that passed. Internet sales for lottery tickets. I worked a lot on alcohol legislation. Uh, the doggy bag bill for unfinished bottles of wine that passed is something my husband likes to brag about when we go out to dinner. And then we did craft breweries in 2010. Then there was Senate file 2351. It was enhancing penalties for death by strangulation in domestic abuse cases. That was a really tough bill. I've lived through the CTEC investigation in 2007, the touch play machines in 2006, and then the weather, the tornado of 2006, the winter storms of 2007, and the floods of 2008. But probably the things I am most proud of that I worked on were pay equity and the wind energy tax credits. I've served on eight different committees over my tenure, education, economic development, environmental protection, local government, state government, judiciary. I subbed on human resources for a colleague and on government oversight. That's a lot of committees. Issues that I would encourage you to keep working on. Voters' rights. Keep voting easy and accessible. Human rights and civil rights. We need to be fair, open, and inclusive. Education. Keep our students interested and engaged. After all, the students of today are our leaders for tomorrow. Some of the things that I won't miss, the word notwithstanding. I don't think that has a place in my vocabulary going forward. I will also not miss all the waiting or legislative time or all the paper that we pass. I worked on the memorial service for our deceased members over the years 
and think it's one of the most important things that we do for our fellow colleagues, remembering their services to the state. But now the most important part of my time here is the people I serve with. I know I can't start naming names because I'll forget someone, but there are a couple of people I want to recognize. One is the person who's responsible for my being here. She's the one who said, you need to run for office. What was I thinking? Who convinced me to do this job? Who was there? And then a good friend, and despite these 20 years, she is still a good friend. Representative Mary Masher. I want to thank my Johnson County colleagues, Amy and Dave. Keep fighting the good fight. And then Beth, Brian, Rick, good friends and good times. Great talks over long dinners. Please stay in touch. And lastly, my roommate, my colleague, my guest <coughs> desk neighbor, and I guess my twin. How many times have I been Cindy and you've been Vicky? I don't understand, we don't look alike, the only thing we have in common is the E at the end of our name, but we were constantly mixed up. Maybe because we sit next to each other. We've spent many years trying to solve problems over a glass of wine or a beverage with olives in it. I'll miss you and those cocktail hours. I have tried to be fair, honest, and open-minded during my time here. I've worked to be true to myself and steadfast to my constituents. It's been a tug of war for my business partner, who is also my former husband. He was never excited to see January come. And now that I will be spending most of my time in Iowa City, he may think differently. But thank you, Michael. My children, Amanda, Alex, Nick, and Lauren, who've been supportive over the years. Their nickname for me over the past two years has been the Honorable, which drives me crazy. Over the years, they've tolerated the forums, the elections, the special sessions. One year we had so many special sessions, my son said, what makes it so special? You do it all the time. The phone calls, the meetings, thank you kids. And to my husband, Rich, who cheers me on every endeavor always patient, always a good listener, always my shoulder. I love you all and thank you for being so accepting and supportive. Now I want to close with my favorite verse by poet Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. I'm not sure what road lies ahead for me, but ladies and gentlemen, the road through this chamber has made all the difference for me. Thank you so much. <laughs>